It's been a long time since I reviewed TIAC equipment. I'm judging on the UD701M-S that has been an omission. It's an FPGA DAC with MQA, a balanced full analog preamplifier and balanced headphone amplifier. In the late 70s I owned a TX A7030 tape recorder I used in a small studio that I run with friends. Throughout the 90s I owned a VRDS10 CD player, later modified with a Tantlapse clock crystal. And now the 701 is on my bench. I started with a quarter inch tape then via CD to streaming, the soundtrack of my life. Let's see where the 701 is to be used in your stereo. In this video I will call the TIAC UD701 N D701. The 701 is to be connected to your amp over either RCA or XLR cables depending on the inputs of your amp. Your amp of course drives either a pair of loudspeakers or headphones. On the input side the 701 is connected to your modem router to connect to the internet and for instance to your computer or NAS. For streaming you can use a tablet or smartphone running the free TIAC HR streamer or Rune app. If you want a CD player can be connected to over either SPDIF, TOSLINK or analog over RCA or XLR cables. Your TV can be connected to over either TOSLINK or analog RCAs if your TV allows for sync compensation. The analog inputs can also be used for analog sources like a turntable with phono preamp or a tuner. Instead of the integrated amplifier you can also use a power amplifier or replace the amplifiers and speakers with active speakers. The 701 comes in two colors, black and blank metal. It measures 444 by 334 by 111 mm and weighs 11.8 kg. On the front left we see the classic power switch, here used to switch the player in and out of standby. There are two headphone outputs, one XLR4 for balance headphones and one classic 6.3 mm jack headphone output. The output selector next to it lets you select the line outputs on XLRs or on RCAs or the headphone outputs on XLR4 or jack. The menu button opens a menu on the display to make several settings, on which later on more. This rotary encoder is normally used to select the input where pressing confirms the choice, but when the menu is active it is used for that. A USB-A lets you connect USB storage to play back from. The display has two modi when playing. Show input and sampling frequency or input and volume setting. The biggest knob is the volume control. On the right the IEC mains inlet. A pair of triggers in and outputs make it possible to control the power of connected equipment like an amplifier to have it switch on the 701. The RS232C connector above it is for fancy remote control systems that are used by custom installers. Then we come to the left channel analog I.O. The balanced input on XLR, the balanced output on XLR, the single ended input on RCA and the single ended output on RCA. Then the digital input selection, USB B for when you use the DAC directly connected to a computer, smartphone or tablet. For Windows a special driver for higher sampling rates can be downloaded from TIAC. Apple and Linux computers don't need a special driver. Next to it the 10 MHz clock input for when you want to use an external clock unit. TIAC will introduce an external clock unit soon. I will see if I can get it on review later on. A USB-A connector lets you connect a storage medium holding music. Then SPDIF input 1, TOSLINK input 1, SPDIF input 2 and TOSLINK input 2. Nowadays SPDIF is often called coax while TOSLINK is often called optical. 
probably to prevent infringement of rights. The network cable is connected here, while below it the Bluetooth antenna can be found. There is no Wi-Fi radio. A micro USB connector is for software updates. Finally the analog connections for the right channel. The balanced input on XLR, the balanced output on XLR, the single ended input on RCA and the single ended output on RCA. On this photo the sources for the pointed feet are shown nicely. They are held together with screws when the 701 is lifted up. Although I would still see proof of the effect of spikes or feet like these on vibrations, when done like here they have no negative effect in practical use. When I removed the lid I was quite surprised to find four toroidal transformers mounted on metal razors. In this price class you might find two transformers or one transformer and a switch mode power supply, but four transformers and thus four linear power supplies I have never seen before. But let's start at the beginning. When the mains power enters the 701 it passes through a mains filtering and is passed on to the four transformers. One of the four feeds the power circuit that in turn feeds the streamer module, the display and some other control electronics. The second transformer feeds the power supply circuit on the left analog channel with the output electronics on the lower board and the input circuits on the board above. The same goes for the right analog channel with outputs on the lower board and inputs on the board above it. So it's a full dual mono setup. The middle transformer feeds a power supply circuit of the digital audio section on the lower board. The most interesting component is hidden below the streaming module, so I removed it. Now we can see the Xilinx Spartan 7 FPGA. It is programmed as one bit Delta Sigma discrete DAC with MQA decoding and rendering. PCM signals are according to the manufacturer's documentation upsampled to 384 kHz, then sent to a Delta Sigma modulator to be converted to a one bit signal and thus also noise shaped. It makes me wonder why a 44.1 kHz signal is not converted to a 22.5 MHz DSD signal directly. They probably have a good reason. I also found an ARM processor usually used for operational control. The fixed output level for both RCA's and XLR's is 2 volts RMS or 6 dB higher, so 4 volts RMS as set in the menu. As set to variable, for instance to drive a power ramp directly, the RCA's output a maximum of 6 volts RMS while the XLR's output a maximum of 12 volts RMS. That's enough to drive most power ramps and active speakers. The unbalanced headphone outputs can deliver 500 milliwatts in 32 ohms per channel. The balanced outputs can deliver 700 milliwatts in 32 ohms per channel. As you know I don't like headphones listening, so I did not evaluate these outputs. I don't consider myself an expert in this field. The 701 has more than enough inputs. Using them is simply a matter of connecting and selecting the corresponding input. The USB inputs accept PCM up to 384 kHz 32 bits and DSD 512. The same goes for streaming. As a consequence of the industry standard, SPDIF and Toslink accept up to 192 kHz 24 bits and DSD 64 over DOP. Gapless playback is supported. MQA files are decoded and rendered. Standard DLA streaming works fine using a DLA controller on a smartphone or tablet. You need a DLA or UPnP AV server running on a computer or NAS. To test DLA compatibility I use Minim server on the Sonic Transporter i7 CDR and use Glider on an iPhone 11 to control it. Normally you would download the free TIAC HR streaming software, which I did on my iPhone, iPad Pro and Mac Studio. 
The latter can run many iPad apps, including HR Streamer. It supports Tidal, Cobus and Spotify and of course your local DNA server. I selected that first by tapping the cogwheel, selected music library and selecting mining server Sonic Transport. It takes some time for the HR streamer to load all the metadata but when ready it functions blazingly fast since it doesn't have to access the DNA database on the server anymore. Let's start Phil Collins but seriously. Fills up the playlist, the album is shown and can be enlarged. In the top right of the screen you see the transport buttons. A progress circle that when clicked lets you move through the song. You can watch the catalogs as tiles, as list and as list with small album arts. External streaming services are available too. I don't have a Spotify account but if you have it can be used. I do have a Coboost and Tidal account. Music can easily be found using the filter function. Let's filter for David Bowie. It all works swift and easy. The 701 is also rune ready. You can even set a special RAD mode, rune advanced audio transport, that disables all other network functions including open home, UPnP, Spotify Connect and Tidal Connect so they can't interfere. The 701 works fine with Room, it's certified and thus automatically has the right settings in Room. But I didn't notice any difference with the Use All Protocols mode. Since my Magna Mana was sent to Magna Hi-Fi to be updated to the Raspberry Pi 5 but got lost in transport, thank you DPD, I was not able to reliably test the digital inputs. I do have other equipment with SPDIF outputs but I have not used those enough, they could not give me a reliable reference. So I only tested the streaming functions with the TIAC HR Streamer app and Rune and the analog inputs with the analog XLR outputs of the Grim U2 streamer as source. Then now the setup. The analog outputs of the 701 were connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier on OVA EQ feed over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. I have tried both using the Air as integrated amp and in processing pass through mode in which it functions as a power amplifier. The PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Stack Audio OVA 17 isolators were connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The connection between the 701 and the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch was over the Network Acoustics Eno2 system Ethernet filter. Access to the Internet was over the Zigo business modem that is connected to the Zixel over a CAT6 patch cable. Also connected to the Zixel is the Sonic Transporter i7 CDR that runs Minim server and Rune server. An IP2 was used to control both HR Streamer and Rune. The Grim Audio Mu2 as analog source was connected over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables to the 701 and over a CAT6 patch cable to the Zixel switch. All equipment was placed in a Creative Trend 3-3 rack. FPGA DACs have the name of sounding analytic and cold. I don't agree with that but can assure you the 701 does not sound cold nor fat and muddy. Lush is the word that springs to mind. There is a royal stereo image, very well controlled sibilance, deep lows with good texture and open yet warm voices. Mid range resolution is as good as the products in this class. Although different than the DACs I am used to, I could easily live with this DAC. As an analog preamp it has the same character as in streaming mode. All judgments in relation to the price of course. The 701 is like the proverbial Swiss army knife. It's a DAC, it's a full balance analog preamp, a digital preamp, does DSD 512, PCM 384 and MQA. 
Soundwise, it can be placed in my setup 1B somewhere halfway. With an MSRP of 1 euro below 3000 euros, it's an attractive machine, especially for those seeking this versatility. And on that bombshell, we come to the end of this video. There will be a new video next week, so subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram to stay informed on when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumbs up or link to this video in the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.